The US President Joe Biden has arrived in Brussels for key meetings on the war in Ukraine. North America correspondent Jade McMillan joins us now from Washington. Jade, what's expected from these meetings? Well, Joe Biden has a packed schedule in Brussels tomorrow. He'll attend an extraordinary NATO summit, as well as meetings of the European Council and the G7. This is an opportunity for all of those leaders to come together face to face roughly a month since Russia's invasion of Ukraine began. They're expected to announce further sanctions against Moscow and also to tighten up some of the existing ones. They'll also discuss providing further military and humanitarian support to Ukraine. But the message that Joe Biden really wants to send in attending these meetings in person uh, is that the West remains united in the face of Russia's aggression, uh, that the coordinated response that we've seen from Western allies so far will continue. Even as pressures begin to emerge, there has been disagreement, for example, between the United States and Poland on how to get Polish fighter jets into Ukraine. So Joe Biden wants to discuss those next steps uh, with leaders face to face uh, and to send a message, I suppose, to uh, Western allies, but also to Russia on uh, the, the sense and the continued sense of, of isolation that Russia is dealing with. And so there's a, a series of meetings as well as the NATO summit. Yeah, that's right. We did hear from NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg earlier today ahead of that extraordinary NATO summit, and he revealed that members are likely to agree to uh, a further ramping up of NATO's military presence. There are already around 40,000 troops spread between the Baltic and the Black Seas. Jens Stoltenberg says that uh, when members come together tomorrow, they are likely to agree on sending more battle groups in to really bolster again its eastern flank. I expect leaders will agree to strengthen NATO's posture in all domains, with major increases to our forces in the eastern part of the alliance, on land, in the air, and at sea. The first step is the deployment of four new NATO battle groups in Bulgaria, Hungary, Romania and Slovakia. Now, ahead of these European meetings, the United States has also formally declared that it believes Russian forces have committed war crimes in Ukraine. You'd remember roughly a week ago, the US President Joe Biden said in response to a question from a reporter that he believes that the Russian President Vladimir Putin is a war criminal. The White House uh, responded to those comments by saying that they had come from the heart and that official investigations into whether war crimes are being committed in Ukraine were underway. But the Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, has released a statement today saying that based on the information currently available, the US now believes or it assesses that Russian forces have committed war crimes in Ukraine, that it will continue to collect evidence uh, on those alleged war crimes to assist with any, any investigations as they unfold. Okay, Jade McMillan there in Washington.